Hello everyone, am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible, audible. I will start the class ahead. Give me a minute to confirm it. Okay, I hope it's working. Yes, it's working. So, I welcome you all for today's session. A very, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today, I'm here to take a very, very important topic. Uh, you can say... Uh, from this uh, portion which I am going to teach you ahead next one hour, you can expect many questions in your competitive exams. Whether you talk about NEET PG, FMG or INICT. In all the exams, you can crack your many, many questions based on these mnemonics. So today, I am going to teach you many mnemonics. Today, I am going to teach you many mnemonics. The first lecture will be on entire mnemonics of bacteriology. After that, we will start parasitology. After that, we will start... Um, pathology the complete pathology after that we will come on pharmacology so i will give you more than 500 mnemonics uh, mnemonics will be based on those portions that you have to learn means in medical subjects we have two types of uh, knowledge the one are the concepts that you have to understand that you don't have to mug up that you don't have to uh, learn or mug up that you have to understand only the other type of study is the things which you have to mug up there is no concept behind them. There are facts behind them. So the, for the factual study, you know, the things which you have to mug up to simplify those things, we have created many mnemonics so that you cannot forget these things in the exam and you can simply uh, mark the correct answer in your exam. Give me a minute if I can see your chat. Give me a thumbs up. Someone give me a thumbs up in the chat. Please give me a thumbs up in the chat. Okay. I guess I can see it now. Okay. Just a second. Okay. So let me let me start. Without wasting time, let me start. I will give you the mnemonic and I will also show you how MCQs can be created based on this mnemonic and you can track the MCQ easily. Okay. Let me come on the first mnemonic. I am starting with bacteriology in microbiology as well as pathology. This is the common portion. Let me start with bacteriology. You can see the first mnemonic. You know, Cox postulates are there. There are four Cox postulate that every microorganism must follow, must meet these criteria, which are there in the four Cox postulate. I will tell you what are Cox postulate. So there are many bacteria, many viruses, many fungus. Only four bacteria do not follow, do not follow Cox postulate. Rest all the bacteria follows Cox postulate. This is a lot question. Many MCQs come from this portion. Tell me the name of the bacteria who do not follow Cox postulate. Can you tell me the name of those bacteria? There are only four bacteria. The mnemonic is in front of you. Okay, let me read the name of the bacteria. It is Mycobacterium lipri, which causes leprosy. It is Trepanoma pallidium, right, uh, which contains pyrochetes. It contains Clapsiella granulomatis and it contains Nizeria gonori. So these are the four bacteria which do not follow. They do not follow Cox postulate. Many MCQs come based on this concept. So, there is a mnemonic. You can learn the mnemonic like no LPG gas. No means they are not following. They are not following the Cox postulate. LPG gas. So, L based, L, uh, L means lipri. L means lipri. P means palladium. Trypanoma palladium ka P hai. G, there are two G. LPG ka G and gas ka G. So, the two G are gonori, Nizeria gonori and Clapsilla granulomatosis ka G hai. So, what is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is no LPG gas. This is the mnemonic. This is the mnemonic. So no means they, these four organisms are not following the Cox postulate. So lipri. Lipri means mycobacterium lipri. Pallidium. Pallidium means trypanoma pallidium. Gonori. Gonori means Nizeria gonori. And granulomatosis. Granulomatosis means Clapsilla granulomatosis. Now you have to learn this mnemonic. I will show you the questions also based on this concept. What are Cox postulates? Many students even don't know what are Cox postulates. So I am just fast revising you what are Cox postulates. There are four Cox postulates. If you say any organism, any organism, just for suppose uh, I am saying a disease. You can take the example of any disease. So just suppose I am taking tonsillitis. Tonsillitis or pharyngitis, it is caused by which organism? It is caused by a bacteria. The name of the bacteria is Streptococcus. Uh, streptococcus pyogens, right? This is the name of the bacteria which causes tonsillitis. Or you can say pneumonia. You can say pneumonia. Pneumonia is caused by streptococcus pneumonia. So any disease you say, this is the disease. 
these are the diseases these are the diseases which are caused by the organism but i cannot say that any disease caused by any organism there should be a proof what is the proof that this disease is caused by this organism only you have to give me a proof so the proof is given in the cox postulate there are four cox postulate how you can prove that how you can prove that number one the organism which you are saying that it is causing some particular disease that organism should be constantly associated with the lesions present in that disease but the organism should not be found in healthy healthy animals healthy organisms right so if you are saying that pneumonia is caused by pneumococcus so in all the cases of pneumonia in the world you can find pneumococcus but in healthy individuals you shouldn't find pneumococcus that is the first criteria you should be able to isolate the organism from the lesions of the disease so in pneumonia from the lung you can find out streptococcus pneumonia or in tonsillitis you should be able to find out find out streptococcus pyogenes you should be able to isolate it after isolating it on a culture plate on a culture plate you will found the colonies you will found the colonies if the isolated organism is reinjected into some laboratory animal the laboratory animal should have the same same similar disease so again from the isolated organism you are reinjecting the isolated organism on the culture plate into some experimental animal and the experimental animal again have pneumonia or the same disease which you are talking about and from that another animal you should be able to re isolate it you should be able to re isolate it so these are the four cox postulate you can see you can see okay we have taken a organism this is the diseased animal just suppose this mice is having any particular disease for example pneumonia so we have isolated the bacteria from it so this is the blood from the blood we have isolated it so the organism uh, the, the bacteria is present in the diseased animal not in the healthy animal healthy animal blood do not have the bacteria but the diseased animal blood have the bacteria so from the diseased animal we can culture it so first the organism is present in diseased animal not in healthy animal you can see it here right second the organism should be able to isolate from the diseased animal after isolating taking from the culture plate and reinjecting it to another experimental animal so the another experimental healthy animal again have the same disease the previously the organism was having and i should be able to re isolate it re isolate it so these are the four cox postulate in front of you i want a thumbs up you got my point these are nowadays a fifth cox postulate is also added the organism should have specific antibody for that uh the the animal should have specific antibody for that organism so if you check the blood of the diseased animal you can find the specific antibody so these are the five cox postulate you should learn 1 2 3 4 initially only four were there but nowadays we have added the fifth cox postulate also so what are the five cox postulate so that the or, uh, the first thing the organism the microorganism the bacteria it is present in the diseased animal but not in healthy you will find the organism in diseased animal but not in healthy animal throughout the world throughout the world right you should be able to isolate it you should be able to isolate the organism on the culture plate after isolating if you are injecting the isolated organism on the culture plate into a healthy healthy animal the healthy animal will have the similar disease and you should be able to re isolate it re isolate it from this animal now from this diseased animal now you should be able to re isolate it and the organism will have antibodies against the um, the organism will have antibodies uh against that organism right now see the first question who will answer it tell me the answer of this question all of the following pathological bacteria pathogenic bacteria fulfills cox postulate except the question contains except the four options are in front of you tell me what is the correct answer any one of you please tell me what is the correct answer any one of you please tell me what is the correct answer yes can you tell me the four options are in front of you Trypanoma pallidum, Yersinia pestis, Bacillus anthracis, and Helicobacter pylori. What is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is no L P G gas. Apply. So these four organisms do not follow Cox postulate. So what is P here? P is Trypanoma pallidum. Pallidum ka P hai ye. So the correct answer here is A. So it is a question from the previous year question papers P Y Q. Right? You can see this question. Coming to the next question, the correct answer here is A. This is the next question in front of you okay let me move ahead okay so coming to the next mnemonic coming to the next mnemonic the next mnemonic is in front of you i will tell you the list of the bacteria who are capsulated now in the next mnemonic i will tell you the list of the bacteria which are capsulated the list of the bacteria which form spores and the list of the bacteria capsulated spore forming and motility the list of the bacteria which are motile right so there are many 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 bacteria in your syllabus out of the all the bacteria in your syllabus only nine are capsulated you should know the names of those nine bacteria 
only four are spore forming you should know the name of those four four spore forming bacteria and there are 12 bacteria which are motile so you should know the name of those 12 bacteria right so the nine capsulated bacteria i will tell you a mnemonic i will tell you for that spore forming bacteria i will tell you a mnemonic for motility there are two types of flagella there is polar flagella and there is peritrichous flagella peritrichous flagella so some bacteria are motile by polar flagella some bacteria are motile by peritrichous so 6 plus 6 total 12 so i will give you two mnemonics here so in this way i am going to give these mnemonics now ahead right so capsulated bacteria many of you may be knowing this mnemonic the mnemonic of the capsulated bacteria is pakeep mcv these are total nine bacteria only nine bacteria have capsule rest all the bacteria do not have the capsule so what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is pakeeb 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 mcv in pathology we have mcv mch mchc like so pakeeb it is the pak pakeeb pak cell volume so pakeeb mcv this is the mnemonic you can make some other mnemonic also okay so okay good morning yash yashwant can you see the mnemonic so what is the full form of pakeeb mcv p for pneumococcus a for anthrax bacillus anthrax k for klebsiella i for influenza haemophilus influenza y for yersinia now b me confusion hai. it is not uh, 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 brucella it is bordetella it is not brucella it is bordetella m for meningococcus nigeria meningococcus c for clostridium but not all clostridium only two clostridium clostridium perfringens and butyricum and v for vibrio it is not vibrio cholerae it is vibrio parahemolyticus you got my point so what are the nine bacteria the mnemonic is pakeeb pakeeb m c v can you tell me the name of the nine bacteria what are the name of the nine bacteria tell me so p for pneumococcus a for anthrax bacillus anthrax k for klebsiella i for haemophilus influenza y for yersinia d for bordetella not brucella m for meningococcus now see pneumococcus and meningococcus both are coming pneumococcus meningococcus c for clostridium only two clostridium not all number 1 clostridium perfringens and number 2 clostridium butyricum clostridium cutaneae nahi hai clostridium difficile nahi hai other clostridium are not capsulated only two of them are capsulated b is vibrio but it is not the main vibrio vibrio cholerae no it is vibrio parahemolyticus so these nine bacteria in the world are capsulated rest all bacteria if you say any other name salmonella shigella rickettsia spirochetes um staphylococcus streptococcus gonorrhea if you say any 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 other bacteria in your mind those all are non capsulated give me a thumbs up if you got it give me a thumbs up so that is a list of capsulated bacteria right now see see the question see the question apply this mnemonic in the question so that you will have a better understanding so see the question is in front of you which of the following is not capsulated which of the following organism is not capsulated so apply the mnemonic what is the mnemonic pakeeb pakeeb mcv these all are capsulated rest all are non capsulated okay let me apply so p for pneumococcus it is coming in the mnemonic so this one is capsulated m for meningococcus it is also coming in our mnemonic so it is also capsulated it is also capsulated let's have a look on the other two proteus and uh, cryptococcus proteus do not come proteus is a bacteria it is not coming in our mnemonic this p is pneumococcus it is not proteus so proteus is not coming in our mnemonic so that's why i have told you only these one are capsulated remaining all are non capsulated so proteus is non capsulated what about cryptococcus ye teen to bacteria hain this one is a bacteria this one is a bacteria this one is a bacteria so the mnemonic is for bacteria but cryptococcus is a fungus it is not a bacteria it is a fungus it is a capsulated fungus that's why it is not coming in this mnemonic cryptococcus is also capsulated but you may ask me ki ma'am you didn't told us that cryptococcus is capsulated here c is not cryptococcus here c is clostridium but cryptococcus is a fungus this is a mnemonic for bacteria so in the question all the organisms are asked it can be bacteria it can be fungus so the summary is that pneumococcus meningococcus are the bacteria which are capsulated cryptococcus is the fungus which is capsulated but proteus is a bacteria which is non capsulated so our answer will become d here you got my point yes pkg correct very good yes kunal so correct correct answer here is d you got my point so these are the nine bacteria in the world which are capsulated remaining all are non capsulated remaining all are non capsulated okay after this let me come on motility let me come on motility how many bacteria are motile how many bacteria are motile bacteria are motile bacteria can move from here to there only if they have flagella otherwise they cannot move if they have flagella they can move otherwise they cannot so flagella is the organ flagella is the 
you know, organ for the motility which is present inside the bacteria. Let me draw a bacteria for you. Let me draw two bacteria. This is one of the bacteria. This is another bacteria. Flagellas are of two types. If the flagella is present at the pole, it is known as polar flagella. If the flagella is present all around, all around the bacteria, this flagella is known as peritricus flagella. So, whether the bacteria have polar flagella or peritricus flagella, that will be motile because it is a flagella. Because of the flagella, the bacteria can move. Now, some bacteria move by polar flagella, some bacteria move by peritricus flagella. So, six bacteria in the world move by polar flagella, six bacteria in the world move by peritricus flagella. So, total 12 bacteria in the world are motile. So, I am going to give you two mnemonics now. So, first mnemonic is for polar flagella, second mnemonic is for peritricus flagella and total 12 bacteria in this world are motile. You have to learn the name of the 12 very correctly. They are very confusing question. You can't imagine. Okay. Polar flagella ka mnemonic. Let me tell you the mnemonic. The mnemonic of the polar flagella is cute baby sleep. S-L-E-P. Double E nahi hai. Only one E. Cute baby sleep. S-L-E-P sleep. So six, I will tell you the full form. The full form, the mnemonic for the paratrachus flagella. Uh, sorry, sorry. This, this one is the mnemonic of uh, paratrachus. Let me tell you the mnemonic for polar flagella. Very protective solution. H-C-L. H-C-L hydrochloric acid. So these are the six, six bacteria. Let me tell you the full form of these now, right? So let me come on the flagella. As I've told you, the flagella is of two types, polar and paratrachus. You can see, you can see, these all are polar flagella. The, the flagella is present at the pole. Can you see? In the first diagram, this is the flagella. It is present at pole. Only one flagella, flagella at one pole. So it is monotrichus. The two flagella at both poles, north pole, south pole. So amphitrichus and multiple flagella, a tough, tough flagella at one end. So it is lophotrichus. But these all are polar flagella. In this bacteria, you can see flagella are present all around. All around. So this one is paratrichus. So, two mnemonics I am going to give you. Polar flagella of mnemonic hai, very polar solution. Polar se polar yaad aega. Very polar solution HCL. Right. Or paratrichus se cute baby sleep. Cute baby sleep. Let me tell you the full forms. Right. So, paratrichus flagella ka mnemonic as I have already told you. Cute baby S-L-E-P. This is the mnemonic. So, cute ka C stands for clostridia. All clostridia are motile by paratrichus flagella except two clostridia which are non-motile. Clostridium perfringens and titani. These are the two clostridia which are non-motile. They don't have flagella, right? Other all flagella, other all clostridia have paratrichus flagella. B, cute baby. Baby ka B stands for bacillus. All bacillus are motile except the main bacillus, the hero, the main, the prototype, bacillus anthrax. He is non-motile. Otherwise, all other bacteria, all other bacillus, are motile by paratrichus flagella. S, sleep ka S, stands for salmonella. All salmonella. Salmonella, typhi, paratyphi, all of them are motile by paratrichus flagella. Except salmonella gallorum pullorum. It is a type of salmonella which is non-motile. You should know the exceptions. Right. The next, L-E-P. L stands for listeria. E stands for E. coli. And P stands for proteus. You got my point? You got my point? Okay. Let, let me teach you again. Cute, baby, Sleep, S-L-E-P. Can anyone of you tell me the full form? What is the full form? C is for Clostridium. All Clostridium are motile except Clostridium perfringens and Clostridium titani. Rest all are motile. B means Bacillus. All Bacillus are motile except the main one, Bacillus anthrax. S means Salmonella. All Salmonella are motile except one, Salmonella gallorum pullorum. So these three are the exceptions. Uske alawa Listeria, there is no exception. All Listeria are motile. E is E. coli. All of them are motile. P is proteus. All of them are motile. Give me a big, big, big thumbs up. You got my point? Listeria, E. coli and proteus. Right? So, this is the mnemonic for paratrichus flagella. Let me come on polar flagella now. Let me come on the protective polar kardo yaan Very, very protective solution. HCL. This is the mnemonic. Very ka B stands for Vibrio. All Vibrio are motile by polar flagella. Protective ka P is for Pseudomonas. All pseudomonas are motile by polar flagella. Solution ka S is pyrochetes. Pyrochetes are motile by polar flagella. There is no exception. H or C, helicobacter, campylobacter. Dono bhai bhai. Helicobacter, campylobacter. Hello everyone. I guess the video is buffering. The video is buffering. Let me see if it is working right now. I have changed the connection. Give me a minute to confirm it is working. Yeah, I guess it is working now. 
I guess it is working. Okay. So, okay, let me start. So, okay, I was giving you the mnemonic, the mnemonic, just a second. I was giving you the mnemonic of the motile bacteria. And I have told you there are two type of motile bacteria. The one which are motile by paritrichus. Paritrichus is a mnemonic class and uh, some tactical issue is going on. Let me confirm if I can go live. So I will continue the class. Otherwise, I will end the class here. And we'll continue it later on. Give me a minute to confirm if you are listening to me. Let me confirm if I'm if I'm able to join it. So I hope it's working now. Let me see if still it is buffering or it is continuing. Okay. So I was teaching you the mnemonics of bacteriology, right? In the mnemonics of the bacteriology, I have taught you the mnemonic for capsulated bacteria. There are only nine bacteria who are capsulated. I have given the mnemonic for that. Now I have started the bacteria which are motile. The bacteria which are motile. As I have told you, only 12 bacteria are motile. The six of them are by paritrichus flagella and the six of them by polar flagella. So I was teaching you this topic only from the last half an hour, but I am unable to continue and again and again starts buffering. So let me continue this time. So the, the bacteria which are motile by polar flagella, the six bacteria are Q, uh, very protective solution at the L. This is the mnemonic. And the bacteria which are, which are uh, motile by paritrichus flagella, the mnemonic is cute baby sleep. S-L-E-P. The cute baby sleep. So this is the mnemonic. The mnemonic is in front of you. So the point is that why I am writing this mnemonic again and again, I want to tell you S is coming in both of them. L is coming in both of them and P is coming in both of them. So there is a highly, it's a highly confusing mnemonic. Still, if you know the mnemonic, still you can be wrong. So you should know the full form. The full form of the mnemonic is very important. So here in polar flagella, if I, if I talk about the polar flagella, P stands for pseudomonas, right? P stands for pseudomonas, S stands for spirochetes and L stands for legionella. Legionella. So learn this combination. If you talk about same thing in Paritrachus flagella, so P stands for Proteus. P stands for Proteus. L stands for Listeria, not Legionella. It is Listeria. P is Proteus. It is not Pseudomonas. And S stands for Salmonella. All Salmonella, um, Salmonella are motile by Paritrachus flagella, right? Except Salmonella gallorum polarum. So it is Salmonella. Everyone, give me a thumbs up if you got my point. So there are. It is very confusing. You can see S both. Both uh, in both the mnemonics, P in both the mnemonics, L in both. So, what is my advice to you? The advice is that you should learn this combination: Pseudomonas, Pyrochetes, and Legionella. These three are coming together in polar flagella, and Salmonella, Listeria, and Proteus. These three are coming together in Paritrichus flagella. Give me a thumbs up, Yeshwat. You got it, and others, you got it. So, that is the mnemonic for the motile bacteria. Only twelve bacteria in the world are motile. So till now, what we have completed? We have completed, how many mnemonics we have completed yet? I have told you the name of the bacteria which do not follow Cox postulate. Do not follow. So four bacteria are there which do not follow Cox postulate. The first thing. I have told you the name of the bacteria which are capsulated. So nine bacteria are there which are capsulated. I have told you the name of the bacteria which are motile. So 12 bacteria are motile, 6 by polar flagella and 6 by peritrichus flagella. So till now, these are the mnemonics I have given you. For Cox postulate, the mnemonic is no LPG gas. No LPG gas. Right? This is the mnemonic. No means not. They are not following the Cox postulate. Only four bacteria. So L for Lipri, Mycobacterium Lipri. P for Pallidium, Trapanoma Pallidium. G for Gonorrhea, Nizeria Gonorrhea. And G, gas ka G jo hai. It is for Clapsilla granulomatosis. So learn the name of these four bacteria which do not follow Cox postulate. You know what are Cox postulate. I have already explained you. Uh, the nine bacteria which are capsulated, only nine bacteria. The mnemonic is PAKIB, P-A-K-I-Y-B, M-C-V. I guess you know the full form. Should I repeat it or you know it? It is Pneumococcus, Anthrax, Clapsiella, Haemophilus influenzae ka I, Yersinia, um, it is uh, Bordetella, uh, Meningococcus, Clostridium, only two Clostridium, Perfringens and Butyricum, not all, right? And V is Vibrio, but not Vibrio cholerae, it is Vibrio parahemolyticus. 
right so these are the nine bacteria which are capsulated about polar and peritrachus many times i have told you i'm just writing the mnemonic polar is very protective solution hcl or very polar solution hcl peritrachus is cute cute ka c baby baby ka b sleep s l e p s l e p now you should notice that in both of them there is p in both of them there is l you can see there is l and in both of them there is s in both of them there is S, very protective solution hai ye, right HCl so give me a thumbs up so I have told you the mnemonic and everyone give me a thumbs up till now we have completed this coming on the next mnemonic how many bacteria are spore forming spore forming bacteria only four bacteria in the world form spores other none of the bacteria form the spores so what is the mnemonic for that what is the mnemonic for that okay uh, okay before coming on the spore forming bacteria let me do a uh, question on the motile bacteria can you see the question the question is in front of you. Peritrichus flagellas are seen in. Peritrichus flagellas are seen in. So apply the mnemonic and tell me the correct answer. What is the mnemonic for Peritrichus flagella? So the four options are in front of you. Peritrichus flagella ka mnemonic kya hai? Cute baby sleep. S-L-E-P. Cute baby sleep. Apply the mnemonic and tell me what is the correct answer. Tell me the correct answer. Is Vibrio coming in this mnemonic? No. B is not coming in this mnemonic. Right. So it is not the answer. What about P or L? Yahan pe P or L hai. But is it Proteus or is it Legionella? What about C? Campylobacter. C bhi hai yaan pe. Is it Campylobacter? So what is this C? What is this C? Who will tell me what is the correct answer? Yes, Yashwant, Matic, anyone else? What is the correct answer here? Can anyone of you tell me what is the correct answer? So what is this C? What is this P? What is this L? I am talking about uh, Peritrachus flagella. In Peritrachus flagella, L is Legionella. So L is Legionella. Legionella to hai. Legionella to hai. But P is not Proteus. This P is Pseudomonas. This P is Pseudomonas. This P, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. This P is Proteus. This P is Proteus. And this is Listeria. This is Listeria. So, correct answer will be Proteus here. The correct answer is Proteus. L is Listeria, not Legionella. And here C, you can see the C. Here is C. Hai aapka. This C is uh, Clostridium. It is not Campylobacter. So, this, these options are incorrect. Only one is correct. That is Proteus. Give me a thumbs up. Yeshwan, the correct answer is B here. It is Proteus. So, this is how confusing questions comes in your exam. One more thing about the motility. Motility to ho gai. Okay. I got it. All the bacteria, the 12 bacteria in the world which are motile. 6 by polar flagella and 6 by peritrachus flagella. These are, are motile bacteria. They move from here and there. But the way they move from here and there is different. Some of them, the movement is gliding. You know gliding. They glide. Some of them is tumbling. So, they tumble. Some of them is twitching. They move here and there by twitching. Some of them do the spinning. You know the meaning of the spinning. Some of them is stately, very slow. Some of them is jerky. Some of them is like corkscrew. Corkscrew movement will be like this, right? Some of them is lashing. Some of them is like falling leaf, falling leaf from the tree, slowly, slowly, right? Some of them is gliding leaf. Some of them is revolving. You know revolving, revolving. So the movement is different. Now, this table is difficult. I don't have any mnemonic for that, but you should. You should read the names. You should read these names again and again and again. At least two, three times read this table. Read this table. It makes swarming be add karna. What do you mean by swarming? So if you take a culture plate, here is a culture plate. Culture plate, agar plate, culture plate in my hand. If I put one drop of bacteria, one drop of specimen containing bacteria here, I'm doing the inoculation. Bacteria are highly motile and they start moving on the culture plate in circular, in circular rings. This is known as swarming. So, which bacteria do so? So, the Proteus, Mirabilis, Proteus, Vulgaris and Clostridium titani. These are the bacteria and Bacillus cirrus. You have to learn the name of the four bacteria which show swarming. So, please learn the name of the bacteria which show swarming. It is Clostridium titani and the two Proteus, Proteus, Vulgaris and Mirabilis. It's a previous year question hai. In your exam, in NEET PG, it is a previous year question. But other questions can also come in your exam. So, which of them are darting, which of them are tumbling, which of them are stately. You have to learn this list also. Right? You got my point. Now, see this question. Which of the following is non-motile bacteria? Apply the mnemonic. Non-motile. So, I told you only six, only 12 bacteria are motile. Six by polar, six by peritrichus. So, apart from it, rest all are non-motile. Rest all are non-motile. So, the six which are motile by peritrichus is cute baby sleep. And the six which are motile by polar flagella is very protective solution, HCL. Now, the bacteria which is not coming in this mnemonic and in this mnemonic is not motile. So, see, Shigella. Shigella. Is Shigella is coming in any of the mnemonic? No. So, Shigella is non-motile. The correct answer here will be Shigella. 
E. coli, here is the E. coli, here are E. coli. Where is the proteus? Here is the proteus. And where is the vibrio? Here is the vibrio. So, remaining three are motile, either by paratrachus or bipolar. It is not mentioned in the question. The examiner is asking you the non-motile. So, the non-motile will be the one which is not coming in none of the mnemonic, any of the mnemonic. Give me a thumbs up. So, these are the non-motile bacteria. The correct answer here is A. This is how you have to apply the mnemonic. The next question is in front of you. Swarming is seen in. Swarming is a type of motility. I have told you what the swarming, if you take a culture plate and if you do this inoculation at the center, highly motile bacteria starts moving on the culture plate in circular rings and you can see the circular rings. This is known as swarming. So, which bacteria show swarming? I have told you the names. Four bacteria show swarming. Proteus mirabilis, Proteus vulgaris, Clostridium titani and Bacillus cirrus. So, which is coming in the option? Clostridium titani. Yes, yes, Maddox. So, the correct answer here is A. So, swarming may be multiple time PYQ Archukai. So, learn the type of the motility also. Let me come on the next mnemonic, spore forming bacteria. Only four bacteria in the world form spores. Rest do not form spores. So, what is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is BSC chemistry. BSC chemistry, right? What is the full form? B stands for Bacillus. Bacillus anthrax also and Bacillus subtilis also. So, all Bacillus are spore forming. S as the name indicates, sporo, sporosarcina. Sporosarcina is a bacteria which forms spore. Naam mein hi hai sporosarcina. The C is clostridium. There is no exception of the clostridium. All clostridium forms spore. Whether it is perfringes, whether it is titani, whether it is uh, butyricum, whether it is difficult. All clostridium forms spore. There is no exception. And another C is coxilla burniti. Coxilla burniti. So that is spore forming bacteria. As you can see the spores are there. You got my point? Okay. See the question based on that. All of the following are spore forming bacteria except the question contains except. Now apply the mnemonic of spore forming bacteria. Who will apply the mnemonic of spore forming bacteria? The mnemonic is BSC chemistry. Apply the mnemonic. Apply the mnemonic in the question. What is B? B is both bacillus. Bacillus anthrax also, bacillus subtilis also. Both of them are spore forming. C is clostridium. All clostridium, whether it is butyricum, whether it is difficile, whether it is perfringes, whether it is titani, all of them are spore forming. But vibrio is not coming in this mnemonic. So the correct answer is D. Vibrio do not form spores, rest all form spores. The question contains except. You got my point? You got my point? Yes, Nirav Kumar, absolutely right. Yes, Shwans Madik, absolutely right. The correct answer here is D. You got my point? So this is the mnemonic for spore forming bacteria. So let me revise. Till now, we have studied the bacteria which form capsule, remaining are, all are non-capsulated. Only nine of them form capsules. The bacteria which are spore forming, only four of the bacteria form spores, rest do not form spores. And the bacteria which are motile, only 12 of them are motile, six by polar, six by peritrachus. Rest all are non-motile, right? So, I, I'm not saying the full form. Why I'm writing the mnemonics again, there is a reason behind it. Packet MCV is the mnemonic for capsule forming bacteria. Four forming bacteria are BSC chemistry and motile bacteria is very protective solution HCL and cured baby sleep. I guess everyone knows the full forms till now. I'm not repeating it. What is my next mnemonic? What is my next mnemonic here? Tell me the name of the bacteria which is neither coming here nor coming here nor coming here. That is non-capsulated, non-spore forming and non-motile bacteria. How many bacteria are there? Now there are some bacteria which are coming here but not here and here. Some bacteria is coming here but not in the other two. Some bacteria are motile but non-capsulated, non-spore forming. The various combinations are possible. But there are a only few bacteria which is neither capsulated nor spore forming, non-motile. So tell me a mnemonic or a list of bacteria which is neither coming in this mnemonic nor coming in this mnemonic nor coming in this mnemonic. You got my point? So my next, next mnemonic, my next mnemonic is non-motile, non-spore forming and non-capsulated bacteria. The, the triple, triple non Non-motile, non-spore forming, non-capsulated. How many bacteria are there? So there is a mnemonic. The mnemonic is train guards. See the spelling of guards. G-A-R-D-S. Train guards. Train ka jo T hai. Train ka jo T hai is for tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Guard ka jo G hai. It stands for gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. A stands for actinomycetes. Right. R stands for rickettsia. D stands for diphtheria. Clostridium. Diphtheria, uh, Clostridium, Corny bacterium diphtheria, and S stands for Shigella, Shigella type 1, Shigella type 1. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone means everyone. You got my point. So these bacteria are not coming in any of the mnemonic. Now, till now, you know the name of the bacteria which are capsulated. You already know the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic? Please write down in the chat box. 
you know the name of the bacterias which are spore forming what is the mnemonic yashwant nirav kumar matic what is the mnemonic write down in the chat box and the name of the bacterias which are motile motile by polar flagella and motile by paratracus flagella write down the mnemonics i am not writing it again and even after these three things you know the name of the bacteria which are non capsulated as well as non spore forming as well as non motile the combination of triple no so non capsulated non spore forming and non motile the combination so you know the name of the bacteria of these also give me a thumbs up everyone so what is the mnemonic here the mnemonic here is strain g a r d s i guess you know the full form it is tuberculosis gonorrhea actinomycetes rickettsia diphtheria and shigella type 1 now write down other mnemonics and see that these ones are not coming here here and here none of there they are yes yashwan absolutely right pakib mc b nahi hai pakib mc b hai yashwan it is p a k i y b and m c v m c v v for, for vibrio parahemolyticus right spore forming is bsc chemistry bsc chemistry and motile you already know very polar solution hcl and cute baby sleep now say the full forms again 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 now what i mean here see these bacteria are not coming in this list in this list in this list in this list these are the name of the bacteria which are neither capsulated nor spore forming nor motile that is the beauty of these mnemonics beauty of these mnemonics should i proceed ahead should i proceed ahead okay coming on the next group of the mnemonics so for all bacteria you should know whether they are aerobic or whether they are strict anaerobe strict anaerobic whether they are aerobic whether they are anaerobic or whether they are micro aerophilic let me give you three mnemonics now the three next mnemonics so what is my three next mnemonics what are aerobic bacteria give me the list of aerobic give me the list of anaerobic anaerobic means strict anaerobe they are strict or obligate obligate anaerobe anaerobes and third one is micro aerophilic first understand the meaning micro aerophilic so that is based on the oxygen requirement we divide the bacteria into three categories what do you mean by that aerobic are also known as what is the other name of aerobic these are facultative anaerobe facultative anaerobic anaerobic what do you mean by that aerobic or facultative anaerobic i am taking it together aerobic means they prefer in presence of oxygen they require oxygen they prefer but anaerobic bhi hai to mar nahi jayenge they are facultative kaam chala lenge so in absence of oxygen also they are light they are not dead they prefer to have presence of oxygen but in absence of oxygen they are light but the second category is strict or obligate anaerobe so they require absence of oxygen they require in presence of oxygen they will die they will die you got my point and micro aerophilic they require oxygen in small amount in small amount give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so nirav kumar your mnemonic is ambivious for aerobic i am having a big mnemonic you are saying only ambivious me four letters hain but ek bahut bada mnemonic hai for the aerobic i will tell you all so first understand the definition of the three so aerobic or facultative anaerobes kaun se bacteria hain aerobic or fact aerobic means they prefer oxygen they prefer it to grow in presence of oxygen but in absence of oxygen they will not die they will still survive that is facultative anaerobe right but there are strict anaerobe or strict or obligate anaerobe so they prefer absence of oxygen in presence of oxygen they will die and there is micro aerophilic they require only small amount of oxygen right so give me a thumbs up so i will i am going to give you three mnemonics now in the end we will revise all three so the mnemonic for aerobic bacteria nirav kumar see my mnemonic so the mnemonic for aerobic bacteria i am having a mnemonic b3 b3 k l m n p3 k l m n there are two n p3 and b so this is my mnemonic this is my mnemonic not only ambibs it is a big mnemonic so b3 k l m n o p you know in a b c d we have k l m n there is no o then p b3 k l m n o p o nahi hai p and v in the end we have v so say the full form what are three b who will tell me the three b bacillus bordetella brucella the three b all of them are aerobic or facultative anaerobic give me a thumbs up bacillus bordetella brucella k kya hai k se to klebsiella hai l kya hai it is listeria m kya hai it is mycobacteria mycobacteria tb also and mycobacteria leprosy also both the mycobacteria give me a thumbs up there are two n what are the two n nocardia and neisseria nocardia and neisseria there are three p there is pseudomonas also proteus also and posturella also posturella all posturella group except yersinia except yers, uh, yersinia pseudotuberculosis two yersinias are an exception if you want to learn 
and B is Vibrio. Give me a thumbs up. So what is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is B3, B3, K, L, M, N. There is no O. There is P. But there are two N and there is three P and B. This is the mnemonic. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So you know the full form. What are the three B? What are the three P? It is Basilla, Bordetella, Brucella. What is K? It is Clapsilla. L is Listeria. M is Mycobacterium. Both macrobacterium, tuberculosis also, leprosy also. The two N is nocardia and nizeria. Nocardia and nizeria. Both nizeria. Meningitis also, gonorrhea also. The three P. It is pseudomonas, proteus and posturella. Posturella me two yersinias are an exception. And V is vibrio. V is vibrio. So these mnemonics will be really helpful for you in your exam for cracking the MCQs. Believe me. Believe me. That is a list of the aerobic or facultative anaerobic bacteria. Let me move on strict anaerobic. Strict or obligate. They grow only in aerobic environment. They cannot tolerate aerobic. In presence of aerobic, they will die. They will die. So what are the strict anaerobes? The mnemonic is very simple. Can't breathe air. They can't breathe air. If they breathe air, they will die. Can't breathe air. Can't. Can't ka jo C hai, Clostridium. All Clostridium are strict anaerobes. B, breathe ka jo B hai, it is bacteroids. Bacteroids are strict anaerobes. And A is actinomycetes. So can't breathe air. This is the mnemonic for strict anaerobe. Obligate anaerobe. They will die in presence of oxygen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. And coming on micro aerophilic bacteria. The micro aerophilic. They require oxygen but in small amount. Very small amount. So the mnemonic is Hellboy micro camp. Hellboy in camp. Micro to micro aerophilic micro. Hellboy camp. Hell is helicobacter. Camp is campylobacter. Dono bhai bhai. Helicobacter, campylobacter. And B is borelia. B is borelia. Learn HBC. Learn the mnemonic Hellboy Camp HPC. Give me a thumbs up. Let me revise. Based on oxygen requirement, we divide bacteria into three categories. The one which are aerobic. Either you say aerobic or you say facultative anaerobic. One and the same thing. Aerobic or facultative and aerobic. Whatever you say. Right. The second category is strict anaerobe. Very strict. Strict or obligate. Anaerobe. These are anaerobe. Anaerobe. These are not aerobe. The third one is micro aerophilic. They require oxygen. But in small amount. First, understand the definition. If you understand the definition, come on the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic here? The mnemonic here is B3, K, L, M, N. There is no O. P and V. So 2 N and 3 P. You know the full form. What are strict aerobes? Can't breathe air. Learn ABC or can't breathe air, whatever. Yes, yes, Nirav Kumar. You can see ABC also. Or can't breathe air. And microaerophilic, hell boy camp, HBC. Hell boy camp. Say the full forms again, again, again. So that you will learn it. Here C is Clostridium. Clostridium. What is C? Uh, strict and rogue C is Clostridium, Bacterioids and Actinomycetes. That is the full form of ABC here. Microaerophilic may Helicobacter, Campylobacter. Helicobacter hai, Campylobacter hai and B is Borrelia. B is Borrelia. This is how you have to learn the mnemonic. Now apply the mnemonic here. See the question. Who will tell me the correct answer? Nirav, Matic, Yashwant, anyone else? Who will tell me the correct answer? Which of the following is Microaerophilic? Which of the following is microaerophilic? Apply the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic here? Hell boy camp. Yes, Sakshi, you are absolutely right. So Sakshi answered it fast and correctly. What is the answer? What is H? H is helicobacter. It is not given in the options. B is borrelia. It is not given in the option. This B is not bacteroids. No, it is borrelia. What is C? What is C? Yes, C is campylobacter. Very good. Very good. Nirav Kumar, Madik. Very good. The correct answer here is A. So, Campylobacter is the correct answer. Yes, yes, Shwant. Very good. So, the correct answer here is A. So, this is how these mnemonics are very, very useful in your exam in tracking the MCQs. Right? Should we move ahead? So, coming on the next category. Coming on the... So, till now, we have studied the bacteria which do not follow the Cox postulate. Not following Cox postulate. You know, I guess, the list of the bacteria. The bacteria which are capsulated. The bacteria which are spore forming. The bacteria which are motile. Motile by polar flagella. Motile by peritrichus flagella. The bacteria which are neither capsulated nor spore forming nor motile. A list of such bacteria I have also given. Based on the oxygen requirement, the aerobic one, the anaerobic one and the micro aerophilic one. Till now we have seen these much of mnemonics. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Those who have attended my lecture from the beginning, they may be knowing. I have given you a list of these much mnemonics. So take a paper, pan and write these all mnemonics at one place. So that the day before your exam, please revise the full form of these mnemonics. I can guarantee many questions in your exam will be cracked from these mnemonics.
everyone give me a thumbs up everyone do you know the full forms of all the mnemonics of all the bacteria which do not follow the cox postulate you already know the name of name of the bacteria no lpg gas lpg gas you know the full form capsulated bacteria you already know pachyb mcv pachyb mcv spore forming is bsc chemistry bsc chemistry you know the full form polar are very polar solution hcl peritrachus me cute baby sleep s l e p sleep cute baby sleep non non capsulated non spore forming non motile may train guard train ka t or g a r d s train guards you know the full form aerobic may you know the full form of aerobic i guess it is b3 i'm sorry b3 k l m n p v there are two n and three p so you know the full form anaerobic may either you say abc or can't breathe air can't breathe air cba abc cba whatever can't breathe air cba micro aerophilic may hell boy cap hbc everyone give me a thumbs up jitne log dekh rahe ho those who have joined right now now later on after finishing my lecture please watch the recording from the beginning i have told the full form of these much mnemonics till now i want thumbs up from everyone now don't learn the mnemonics learn the full form of the mnemonics yahan pe kitne sare c hain can you can you imagine yahan pe this is c this is c this is c you should know the full form of all these c kitne sare p hain p is very confusing there are many many p's in the entire mnemonics so you can see kitne sare c kitne sare p so there is multiple you know overlap so you should know the full form again 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 so actually today only i am having the lecture on renal system ibq aaj dopahar mein 3 se 5 3 to 5 two hour lecture renal ibq on an academy app free lecture so please do attend it anyways let me continue everyone give me a thumbs up till now let me move on the next category now i am giving the next category the next category tell me the name there are three enzymes catalase is the enzyme oxidase is the enzyme and urease is also enzyme urease many mnemonics many questions many mcqs in, a, in your exam comes from these uh, uh, enzymes tell me the name of the bacteria in which catalase is positive tell me the name of the bacteria in which oxidase is positive and tell me the name of the bacteria in which urease is positive give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up who will tell me the name of these bacteria in which catalase oxidase and urease is positive so i will give i am going to give you three next mnemonics now let me start with catalase catalase only four bacteria in this world have catalase enzyme positive so the mnemonic is shivi s s v e s s v v one is staphylococcus no catalase is you know catalase is the enzyme which differentiates staphylococcus and streptococcus you may be knowing you may be knowing it right a uh, gram positive foci there are two gram positive foci what are the two gram positive foci staphylococcus and streptococcus both of them are gram positive foci how to differentiate between them so the only test which differentiate between them is catalase staphylococcus are catalase positive streptococcus are catalase negative that is a basics you should know everyone give me a thumbs up so you can see in the mnemonic of catalase staphylococcus is coming but streptococcus is not coming so one of the s is staphylococcus other s is shigella all shigella are also catalase positive except shigella type 1 except shigella dysentery type 1 rest all shigella are catalase positive v is vibrio all vibrio are catalase positive and e is all enterobacteria it includes all enterobacteria ac family it is e coli right so that is the full form of catalase positive organism the mnemonic is ssve ssvv you got my point coming on oxidase positive organisms how many oxidase positive organisms you know so i am having a mnemonic for that also he loves painting nice picture on building okay he loves painting very nice picture on building so total seven bacteria seven bacteria are there which are oxidase positive who will tell me the full form he loves painting pehle teen batao he he ka jo h hai he ka jo h hai that is helicobacter h pylori loves ka jo l hai legionella or p is not proteus it is pseudomonas p is not proteus not postulella it is pseudomonas very nice picture agle teen very nice picture very ka jo b hai it is vibrio and nizeria both nizeria it is meningococcus also gonorrhea also so meningococci gonococci both of them and another p okay two p is are there postulella pseudomonas and postulella both are there but proteus is not there ek p painting hai ek p picture hai the last one b b is brucella not bordetella please mind my words so what are catalase positive organisms what are oxidase positive organisms till now what we have learned catalase positive are only four the mnemonic is shivi ssve 
and oxidase positive so only four of them are catalase positive and seven of them are oxidase positive what are oxidase positive who will tell me he loves paintings very nice pictures on buildings on buildings so i guess you know the full forms i guess you know the full forms everyone give me a thumbs up everyone yes sakshi absolutely right so you know the full form of shibi you know the full form of oxidase positive may he loves painting very nice picture on buildings so you should know what it is there p is pseudomonas p is posturella but p is not proteus p is bordetella but not brucella right so you should know the full forms very correctly s is staphylococcus s is shigella but salmonella is not there and staphylo streptococcus is not there so you should know the full forms because s p these are the letters from which multiple bacteria are there let me come on the third mnemonic that is urease positive tell me the name of the bacteria in which urease enzyme is positive so i will give you a mnemonic for that also what is the mnemonic uh, let me write the mnemonic k p saxena k p saxena ki c d k p saxena ki c d ultimate hai hai so k p saxena c d ultimate hai do bar hai kar do double hai so k p saxena c d ultimate hai how many bacteria are there count them So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bacteria are there who are urease positive. Let me tell you the full form. Let me tell you the full form. K P saxena ka jo K hai, wo Klebsiella hai. P Proteus hai. P Proteus hai. K P saxena S Staphylococcus hai. S Staphylococcus hai. So Klebsiella, Proteus, Staphylococcus. C D. It is Cryptococcus. Cryptococcus is a fungus. It is a fungus. Cryptococcus is not a bacteria, right? Cryptococcus is a fungus, right? So it is cryptococcus and d is diphtheroids d is diphtheroids ureoplasma u is ureoplasma and 2h are there it is h pylori also and h influenzae also so h pylori is helicobacter pylori and hemophilus influenzae everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so pehle to ye mnemonic learn karo iska full form learn karo learn eight bacteria which are urease positive after that uh after that learn urease positivity strongativity मतलब कितना ज्यादा कौन सबसे ज्यादा यूरियस किस में है इन सब में से स्ट्रॉगेस्ट यूरियस पॉजिटिव कौन है हु इज द स्ट्रॉगेस्ट यूरियस पॉजिटिव अमंग ऑल दीस सो द आंसर इज एच पाइलोरा एच पाइलोरा एच पाइलोरा इज द स्ट्रॉगेस्ट वन फॉलोड बाय प्रोटीअस फॉलोड बाय प्रोटीअस एंड फॉलोड बाय क्लैप्सिला सो एच पी के सो एच फॉलोड बाय पी फॉलोड बाय के दैट इज द दैट इज द यू नो सीक्वेंस इन व्हिच दे आर स्ट्रॉंगिटिविटी फॉर यूरियस इज देयर एवरीवन गिव मी अ थम्स अप everyone give me a thumbs up so tell me the name of the bacteria which are oxidase positive tell me the name of the bacteria sorry first tell me the name of the bacteria which are catalase positive tell me the name of the bacteria which are oxidase positive and tell me the name of the bacteria which are urease positive who will tell me the three mnemonics first tell me the number of the bacteria how many catalase how many oxidase how many urease you know so catalase positive are four oxidase positive are seven urease positive are eight now tell me the mnemonics who will tell me the mnemonics catalase positive ka kya mnemonic hai sakshi nirav kumar what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is s s v e this is the mnemonic oxidase positive ka kya mnemonic hai he loves paintings very nice pictures on buildings on buildings urease ka kya mnemonic hai what is the mnemonic k p saxena c d k p saxena c d ultimate hai hai everyone give me a thumbs up now i will tell you the full form the full forms are more important here is 4 7 8 yes yashwan very good sakshi very good so what about others so catalase positive ka full form kya hai staphylococcus shigella all shigella right shigella except type 1 so staphylococcus shigella staphylococcus is there shigella is there vibrio v is vibrio and e is e coli antero bacteriaceae or e coli oxidase positive mein it is helicobacter h pylori right l is legionella P is Pseudomonas, one P and one P is Posturella, right? Uh, he loves painting Vibrio. Vibrio is coming here also, here also. Vibrio. It is Nizeria, Nizeria, and it is Bordetella, not Brucella. It is Bordetella. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So you can see Vibrio here. Here, both are coming. Coming on, KP Saxena CD ultimate is. It is Klebsiella. It is Proteus. It is Staphylococcus. Yes, Staphylococcus is coming. Both are coming. In the catalase and the urease, Staphylococcus is coming into. Right? It is Cryptococcus. It is a fungus. Diphtheroids, right? Ureoplasma. The two H R H pylori and H influenzae. H pylori. Now tell me the strongativity in urease positivity. So strongativity is the mnemonic is H P K. So the strongest one is H pylori followed by Proteus followed by Klebsiella. Learn this mnemonic. Learn this mnemonic. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. If you got it till now, everyone, give me a thumbs up. Should I proceed ahead? 
to the next mnemonic give me a thumbs up should i proceed to the next mnemonic the next mnemonic is in front of you you should know the full form of hackac group of organism you may have heard about it what is hackac group of organism what is hackac group of organism all i will tell you the name of the five bacteria now the full form of hackac all these organisms are gram positive they are gram positive they are all are present in oral cavity and they can cause endocarditis so that is the common findings in them what is the full form of hackac here in hackac the h stands for hemophilus a stands for actinobacillus actinobacillus c stands for cardiobacterium e for echella echinella echinella and k stands for kingella echinella kingella cardiobacterium actinobacillus and hemophilus so you should know the full form of hackac organism which cause endocarditis in humans and these are gram positive bacteria everyone give me a thumbs up that is the full form of hackac let me move ahead uh, okay after this i would like to tell you some important skin test some important skin test i would like to tell you in the entire bacteriology these all are skin test you already know tuberculin is a skin test which is done for tuberculosis lepromin is also a test, skin test which is done for leprosy ye do to sare students ko pata hai all of you know it all of you know it right but what you are asking nirav kumar you are asking hemophilus yes it is hemophilus influenza also all hemophilus except hemophilus influenza i don't know about the exception but i guess all hemophilus are included in hackett organism so it is hemophilus is hemophilus uh, influenza also maybe it is including but let me confirm coming on the skin test i was teaching you the skin test here so you can see lepromin test is done for leprosy you all know it tuberculin test is done for tb you also know it so question will not come on lepromin question will not come on tuberculin but others are difficult you may be not knowing it prior test is a skin test which is done for chlamydia kibim test is a skin test which is done for sarcoidosis fairly test is a skin test which is done for a parasite the name of the parasite is cystosomiasis Kasoni test is also a skin test, which is also done for a parasite. The name of the parasite is hydatid disease. The echinococcus granulosus, hydatid disease, echinococcus granulosus, the dog tape form. The sheet test is also a skin test. It is done for a bacteria diphtheriaids. Now the questions can be multiple. Which of the following is a skin test? Which of the following is not a skin test? पहले तो इन सब के नाम याद करो. All these are skin test. पहले तो you should know the list. These are the skin test. We are doing the susceptibility test or skin test. now which of the following test is done for which of the bacteria you should know the combination so the question is uh, like this kasoni test is a skin test done for which of the following bacteria is it done for tuberculosis is it done for leprosy is it done for echinococcus granulosus it is done for diphtheria the correct answer is echinococcus granulosus it is done for hydatid cyst so for each skin test you should know for which bacteria it is done kibim pe pyq aa chuka hai kasoni pe pyq aa chuka hai sheeks pe pyq aa chuka hai and fry pe bhi you will get pyq so all these skin tests are important maximum of them already asked in your previous year question papers in different methods straight forward questions bhi hain aur ghuma phira ke questions bhi hain give me a thumbs up so you should know the list of the important skin test which skin test is performed for which bacteria or which parasite and these all are skin test after that let me tell you a very important finding the intracellular organisms now there are some bacteria there are some bacteria which cannot reside extracellularly they they survive only in in human body they survive only if they remain intracellularly inside some cell so some of the human cell is required this is the host cell or human cell the nucleus of the host cell so bacteria can survive only inside the host cell this is bacteria this is bacteria so tell me the name of those bacteria tell me the name of the those those bacteria which survive intracellularly so these are intracellular bacteria so tell me the name of the cell ye cell kaun sa hai which is this cell human cell i i got it but is it neutrophil is it lymphocyte is it monocyte is it rbc so some bacteria is preferred to live inside neutrophil some bacteria is preferred to live inside lymphocyte some prefer to live inside monocyte some prefer to live inside rbc so separately you should know the list tell me the name of the bacteria which prefer to live inside neutrophil neutrophils ke andar kaun se bacteria prefer karte hain so it is leishmania mycobacterium and gonococcus these are the three bacteria uh one is parasite leishmania is parasite and other two are bacteria so these are the three organisms which prefer to live in neutrophils of human monocytes monocytes ke andar listeria mono naam mein monocytogens hai so listeria resides inside monocytes rbc ke andar we know the malaria parasite plasmodium and babesia they reside inside rbc right non specific any wbc will work it can be monocyte it can be neutrophil it can be eosinophil so trypanosoma resides on site wbc but any wbc will work 
एंड मैक्रोफेजेस के अंदर हिस्टोप्लाज्म सो दिस इज द लिस्ट यू गिव मी अ थम्स अप यू गिव मी अ थम्स अप सो अमंग डब्ल्यूबीसी व्हिच रिसाइड्स अंदर इनसाइड न्यूट्रोफिल व्हिच रिसाइड्स इनसाइड मोनो दिस इज न्यूट्रोफिल न्यूट्रोफिल मोनोसाइट्स एंड मैक्रोफेजेस द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ डब्ल्यूबीसी मैक्रोफेजेस एंड नॉन स्पेसिफिकली इनसाइड एनी डब्ल्यूबीसी एनी डब्ल्यूबीसी एंड आरबीसी सो दीस आर द फाइव कैटेगरीज यू शुड नो तो WBC में कौन रहते हैं RBC में कौन रहते हैं WBC नॉन स्पेसिफिक में कौन रहते हैं WBC में से भी ओनली न्यूट्रोफिल ओनली मोनोसाइट और ओनली मैक्रोफिल सो यू कैन इमेजिन हाउ ब्यूटीफुली द एग्जामिनर कैन फ्रेम एमसीक्यूज ऑन दिस पॉइंट एंड ऑल दीस ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर इंट्रासेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिज्म दे रिसाइड इनसाइड द सेल व्हिच सेल सम रिसाइड ओनली इनसाइड न्यूट्रोफिल सम रिसाइड ओनली इनसाइड मोनोसाइट एंड सम रिसाइड ओनली इनसाइड मैक्रोफेज सम रिसाइड सम विल रिसाइड इनसाइड एनी WBC दीस आर नॉन स्पेसिफिक फॉर WBC and some will remain inside uh, rbc so in rbc it is the plasmodium malaria parasite and babesia give me a thumbs up so these are the intracellular organisms now coming on the next list very important the next list what is the next list here the next list is here is pigment producing bacteria how many bacteria do you know which produce pigment pigment producing bacteria they form colorful colonies so only four bacteria in the world they form colorful colonies because of the pigment production so the first first is step aureus the first one is the step aureus the second is actinomycetes the third one is pseudomonas aeruginosa and the fourth one is thracia so ssap ssap you can make a mnemonic or you can make pass p a w s pass pass is the mnemonic pass is the mnemonic for pigment producing bacteria pigment producing bacteria kitne pata hai aapko pass is the mnemonic what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is the pass so p stands for pseudomonas pseudomonas aeruginosa a stands for actinomycetes and the two s one is staphylococcus and one is serratia learn the color of the pigment also it is also important so you know staph aureus form golden yellow colonies golden yellow colonies on nutrient agar which is which is giving oil paint appearance you may have studied it so oil paint appearance golden yellow colonies ki wajah se hoti hai uh, actinomycetes also form yellow colonies but it is sulfur granules sulfur ki wajah se yellow colonies hai pseudomonas form blue green colonies and serratia form red red color colonies give me a thumbs up so the mnemonic here is pass you got the mnemonic you got the mnemonic say yes the mnemonic is pass the mnemonic of pigment producing bacteria is pass isse pehle maine aapko skin test bataye aur intracellular organisms bataye skin test and intracellular organisms i have told you what you are asking sakshi nizeria i guess you are asking for nizeria gonori so here i have told you nizeria gonori it prefer to live inside neutrophil so nizeria resides inside neutrophils so actually you got your answer so here is the nizeria and my mnemonic so nizeria is here so intracellular bhi ho gaya skin test bhi ho gaya hackeck bhi ho gaya uske pehle maine ye sab bataya hai and now i am telling you pigment producing the next mnemonic is the bacteria which produces biofilms what do you mean by biofilms in vivo biofilms ka matlab kya hota hai okay let me draw a diagram of a bacteria imagine this is a bacteria this is the nucleus of the bacteria this is a bacteria now if you want to kill this bacteria you will give antibiotics you will give the drugs antibiotics to kill this bacteria right so we want to kill this bacteria we will give antibiotics but some bacteria are very smart they cover themselves by biofilms they produce biofilm biofilm it is a film like material and they cover themselves with the help of biofilms now because of this the antibiotic cannot reach the bacteria and these bacteria are very difficult to kill so these bacteria are resistant yes resistant to antibiotics very few antibiotics can cross this biofilm and kill the bacteria so pseudomonas is one of them there are many bacteria so four bacteria are there which form biofilms so it is one is staphylococcus one is streptococcus there are two ss staphylococcus epidermidis and streptococcus viridis so one step one strep learn the full form step kaun sa step it is epidermidis or strep kaun sa strep it is viridis one is pseudomonas one is pseudomonas and one is h influenzae non typeable h influenzae so ssph is the mnemonic ssph the four bacteria which form biofilm give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up till now what you have studied what you have studied till now till now you have studied the name of the bacteria which do not follow cox postulate i guess you may be knowing that till now you have studied the name of the bacteria which are capsulated the name of the bacteria which are spore forming the name of the bacteria which are motile motile by polar flagella and motile by paratrichous flagella theek hai iske baad oxygen requirement ke basis no the name of the bacteria which are non capsulated as well as non spore forming as well as non motile ye maine bata diya hai till now till now right uske baad you have learned the name of the bacteria based on oxygen requirement 
based on oxygen requirement you have divided the bacterias into three categories what are the three categories you have divided the three categories are in front of you you have divided the bacterias into aerobic bacterias you know the list of the aerobic bacteria and aerobic bacteria there is a mnemonic for anaerobic bacteria and micro aerophilic bacteria micro aerophilic bacteria that is based on their oxygen requirement you have divided the bacteria into these three categories after that based on the name of the enzyme name of the bacteria which are catalase positive name of the bacteria which are oxidase positive and name of bacteria which are urease positive ye bhi maine bata diya hai you know the mnemonics for them also i guess you know the mnemonics everyone give me a thumbs up after that i told you the name of the bacteria which produce pigments the name of the bacteria which form biofilms which form biofilms the pigment producing bacteria biofilms producing bacteria iske alawa hecat ka full form some skin test i have told you and intracellular yahan pe jagah nahi hai likhne ki so till now i have taught you these much of mnemonics everyone give me a thumbs up everyone means everyone till now i have given you these much you can count i will give you more than 100 mnemonics today so if you learn the full form of these mnemonics you will be you know you you will be able to crack multiple questions in your exam you will be able to so the, the bacteria which do not can be revised just in 2 minutes the bacteria which do not follow cox postulate tell me the name of the bacteria yashwant nirav kumar what is the mnemonic no lpg gas no lpg gas you know the full form of no lpg gas these are the list of the bacteria which do not follow cox postulate the bacteria which are capsulated can you tell me the full form the mnemonic is pakib p a k i y b pakib and c v the nine bacteria which do not follow which uh, uh, which are capsulated what is the mnemonic for spore forming bacteria what is the mnemonic only four bacteria form the spore the mnemonic is bsc chemistry you may be knowing the full form how many bacteria are motile 12 bacteria are motile six by polar flagella six by peritracheal flagella what is the mnemonic the mnemonic for polar is very polar solution hcl and mnemonic for peritracheal what is the mnemonic for peritracheal cute baby sleep as sleepy cute baby sleep give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up now the name of the bacteria which are neither coming in this list nor in this list nor in this list that is non capsulated non spore forming nor motile tell me the list of that bacteria so the list of that bacteria train guards guards g a r d s train guards yashwant nirav kumar sakshi absolutely right yes so train guards you may be knowing the full form coming on aerobic bacteria aerobic aerobic mein the mnemonic was b3 k l m n o nahi hai p k l m n o p right and b so 3 p and 2 n so that is the mnemonic for aerobic anaerobic ke liye abc either abc or can't breathe air can't breathe air cba or abc whatever you say give me a thumbs up micro aerophilic ke liye maine kya mnemonic bataya tha hell boy camp hbc 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 now catalase positive oxidase positive urease positive kon batayega who will tell me the mnemonics for this tell me the mnemonic for catalase positive catalase positive is shivi ssve ssve yes sakshi very good oxidase positive mein hai he loves painting hlp he loves painting very nice picture vnp on building on building so these seven bacteria are oxidase positive urea is positive kon batayega yes sakshi absolutely right urea is positive kon batayega who will tell me urea is positive kp saxena ki cd ultimate hai hai k p saxena c b ultimate hai hai double hai right two h are there you may be knowing so kp saxena cd ultimate hai give me a thumbs up pigment producing bacteria i have told you a mnemonic for pigment producing bacteria also what is the mnemonic of pigment producing bacteria the mnemonic is pas p a double s pas p a double s pas is the mnemonic for pigment producing bacteria i have told you a mnemonic for the bacteria for forming biofilms also biofilms kon kon banate hain ssph ssph is the mnemonic the bacteria which produce biofilms so till now we have learned these much of mnemonics those who have not watched my lecture from the beginning i request all those students after finishing my lecture go to the beginning and watch the recording you can't afford missing these mnemonics you can see it is a mnemonic marathon i will teach you all mnemonics in entire bacteriology entire parasitology entire pathology entire pharmacology entire medicine in this mnemonic marathon i will give you multiple mnemonics so these mnemonics are your weapons which will help you in fighting in your exam with these mnemonics you can crack multiple mcqs you can't believe kitne mcqs tum crack kar sakte ho by 
using these different MCQs in your exam. I'm not saying the full form again, it will take much time, but I guess most of you know the full form of these. Till now, it's in mnemonics. I have told you. Iske alawa, or bhi maine skin test bataya hai, intracellular organisms bataya hai. I'm not having space to write it down on this page. So I request all of you to write down, note down all these mnemonics at one place in your notebook, so that you can revise them before your exam. That that's that's how it is useful. Otherwise, if you don't uh, revise them before your exam, it is not useful for you. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Should I proceed to the next next list? Now there are few important lists in bacteriology. What are those important lists? The bacteria with their alternate name. Alternate name बहुत पूछते हैं. In the alternate name, it is the name of the scientist who has discovered that bacteria. So you should know the alternate name of various bacteria which are already asked in your PYQs. Okay. So let me tell you the name of the Bordetella. Bordetella is known as Bordet Gangu. The name of this Bordetella is Bordet Gangu because it is discovered by the scientist Bordet Gangu. Clostridium titani is known as Nicorelli bacteria. Corny bacterium diphtheri pe PYQ hai, it is known as Claps Loffler bacilli. Claps Loffler bacilli. It pe PYQ hai in the previous year question paper in FMG it is asked. Corny bacterium pseudotuberculosis pe bhi question hai, it is known as Prince Nocard. Name of the scientist who has discovered it. Clapsiella, Tino Clapsiella pe PYQ hai. If you, if you have already solved your, most of the students already solved your previous year question papers, I guess. Last three years ki to all students have solved. So you may be knowing Clapsiella ke other name pe already PYQ hai. Clapsiella pneumoniae is known as Friendlander bacilli. Clapsiella uzeni is known as Prince, uh, Prince and Abel uh, bacilli. And Clapsiella uh, rhinoscleromatosis is known as Frisch bacilli. Ye tino alag se yaad karna, very very IMP, they are already asked in PYQ and repeat question can come. I guess every student know the other name of Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is Cox bacilli. It is discovered by Robert Cox. That's why known as Cox bacilli. But what about Mycobacterium lipri? It is discovered by bat, bat, um, Batis. Uh, I'm sorry, not lipri. You can read. It is Mycobacterium, you know. So it is discovered by the Batis. So you can learn the name of other bacteria, the name of the scientist who has discovered them. This list is important. It is not a mnemonic, but this list is important. You should revise this list before going to your exam. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone should I proceed? So the list is not over here. The list is continuing here, right? Okay, just a second. Okay. Now, the next list is coming. The next list is the colony appearance. You know, all the bacteria are grown on culture media and they form various colonies. They form various colonies. Now, the appearance of various colonies is specific for, for various bacteria. So, this list is very, very important. You told, tell me, Medusa head colony con banata string of pearl colony con banata hai. Inverted fur appearance con deta hai. The answer of all of them is bacillus anthrax. These all are previous year question papers you may be knowing. Desi head colony con banata hai. So answer is diphtheria, uh, clostridium, uh, corny bacterium diphtheria. Satellite colony con banata hai. So answer is H influenzae. Now don't get confused between the two. Satellite colony alag hai. Stelactic growth on the ghee growth alag hai. Stelactic growth con deta hai. It is here seen. Right. Checkers media. You know checkerboard. You know checkerboard, this is known as, this appearance is known as checkerboard. Checkerboard appearance con deta hai, the checkerboard appearance. Typical MCQ. So checkerboard appearance is given by streptococcus pneumonia on blood agar. It is checkerboard appearance. Thumbprint, you know thumbprint, the fingerprint. The fingerprint appearance con deta hai, it is bordetella pertussis. Right, thumbprint, thumbprint, aluminum print appearance or mercury drop appearance. Yes, sub MCQ hai. Fried egg, fried egg. This will be the fried egg. In the center this. And like this, this is fried egg appearance. Fried egg appearance ki colonies con deta you may be knowing. The answer is mycoplasma. Drawnut appearance. You know what is drawnut appearance? Drawnut appearance is carom coin. Carom ki goti dekhi hai. In the center, there is a depression. And there are multiple rings around the depression. This is carom coin. Carom ki goti. Carom board khela hoga na pachpan mein. It is carom coin appearance. Also known as, also known as draughtsman. Draughtsman appearance. Ye kon deta hai? The answer is pneumococcus. The answer is pneumococcus, streptococcus pneumonia. Oil paint appearance kon deta hai? On the colonies, oil paint, yellow oil paint appearance. The answer is step aureus. In sub pe PYQ hai in your previous year question papers. So I can show you the images also. So Medusa head, what do you mean by Medusa head? So imagine Medusa is a girl. Medusa is a girl, Medusa, who is having very curly hairs. The curly, curly hairs. So the appearance of the colonies is like this. So this is the this is the agar plate and you will get like this colony a bunch of curly hairs a bunch of curly hairs this is known as medusa head appearance so this is medusa so there is a reason behind everything 
there is a reason in the gelatin it is inverted for appearance so if you take a test tube and fill it with gelatin it is filled with gelatin and you are putting the bacillus anthrax from above so bacillus anthrax will give you like this appearance like this it is inverted for tree appearance inverted for appearance inverted christmas tree for tree, for tree appearance so there is a reason behind everything you have to learn it you have to learn it give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up the list is not over uh, this list okay yeah this list is over the colony appearance give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up ispe bahut sare mcq aate hain you should know the various colony appearance for various bacteria coming on the next list the next list is the last list of selective media for all bacteria learn selective media for all media expect one mcq in any of your competitive exam next neat pg fmg nst on selective media you should know the selective medias of all me all bacteria if i tell you the name of any bacteria tell me the selective media for bacillus anthrax the answer is pleg media tell me the selective media for bacillus cirrus the two bacillus anthrax and cirrus bacillus anthrax ka pleg hai bacillus cirrus ka mypa media hai you should know the full forms also what is the selective media for bordetella what is the selective media for borrelia what is the selective media for brucella the 3b the 3b now it is the list is uh, alphabetical order so these are two a you can see a pe maine do anthrax bata diye anthrax bacillus and anthrax bacillus cirrus right b teeno b ho gaya bordetella ka hai bordet gengu medium borrelia ka hai callies medium aur brucella ka brucella ka you may be knowing triptychase toy agar so in sab pe mcqs hain ab c pe aa jao campylobacter pe cam back ya screw medium h pylori ka screw medium and chlamydia hela cell right clostridia ka robertson cook agar the anaerobic medium right so and cornibacterium diphtheri you can't forget it is lofler serum slow so how you will learn it i don't know but this list is ultra ultra important for leptospira listeria legionella nigeria gonorrhea pseudomonas shigella streptococcus spirochetes staphylococcus postulella trypanosomes you should learn the list you cannot afford vibrio ka kya hai selective media the answer is tcbs salmonella kya kya hai the answer is wilson blair right nocardia ka kya hai it is modified thier martin so jab jab tumne individual chapters padhe hain you may be knowing the selective media proteus ka multiple time question aa chuka hai the answer is cna agar page cna agar page right fungus ka selective media kya hai it is uh, saburrots dextrose agar page give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up e coli ka kya hai it is mcconkey mcconkey everyone give me a thumbs up so the list is endless you have to learn ye ghee broth pe bhi pyq hai you may be knowing have you solved pyqs have you solved your pyqs if you have solved your pyqs of all exams if you are appearing in any of the competitive exam you should solve your previous year question papers of neat pg fmge nict recent abhi sirf nict to abhi ek do saal se hi ho raha hai to uske not only nict previous year question papers of aims of jipmer and pgi and pgi you should solve previous year question papers at least 3 year preferably 5 year previous year question papers of all these exams if you are targeting any of the exam it is not the thing you are giving neat pg you are targeting neat pg so you should solve pyqs of neat pg only if you are giving fmg you should solve the pyqs of fmg you should solve pyqs of all the exams to have a broad overview ki kya kya point pe question frame ho sakta hai and related theory related theory of that give me a thumbs up तो इन सारी एग्जाम्स के अगर तुमने पीवाईक्यू सॉल्व किए हैं तो यू मे बी नोइंग कि ये लिस्ट कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है इसमें जितने भी मैंने नाम दिए हैं ऑन विच क्वेश्चंस हैव ऑलरेडी आस्ड इन योर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर द लिस्ट इज एंडलेस राइट सुडोमोनास का यू मे बी नोइंग इट इज सिट्रिमाइड अगर निजेरिया गोनोरी का थियर मार्टिन मीडियम राइट एंड आल्सो चॉकलेट अगर सो यू हैव टू लर्न दिस लिस्ट यू हैव टू देयर इज नो एस्केप इफ यू वांट टू गेट सिलेक्टेड इन योर एग्जाम विद अ गुड रैंक यू हैव टू लर्न द सिलेक्टिव मीडिया ऑफ ऑल बैक्टीरिया So there are almost forty bacteria. You can count them. Almost forty are there. You should know the selective media for all bacteria. If I tell you the name of any of the forty bacteria, you should be knowing the selective media for it. This is the thing. There is no mnemonic for that. I cannot give you the mnemonic for all of them. No. But read this list at least twice or thrice before going to your exam. So if any question is coming from out of the four options. you will be able to pick it ki nahi yaar triptychase soy maine padha hai it is in brucella so if you read the list for four five times now it will fit in your mind it will fit in your mind everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point so selective media list is ultra 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 important you can't afford missing it give me a thumbs up the next important list in bacteriology is important growth factors uh many bacteria requires imp- uh, few specific growth factors for their growth for example 
these all are amino acids okay let me start e coli is a bacteria which require arginine for its growth without which it cannot grow uh, salmonella typhi t40 typhi requires tryptophan tryptophan is also amino acid it is required by salmonella typhi g for g gonococci require glutathione without which it cannot grow l for l legionella require l cysteine L cysteine, levocysteine, not dextrocysteine for its growth. Mycoplasma require cholesterol for its growth. This is PYQ, hai. tryptophan is PYQ. Hai. Vibrio requires normal saline without which it cannot grow. Right. Atypical mycobacteria requires aryl sulfate and amide without which it cannot grow. But mycobacterium tuberculosis require niacin. These are sub important. Hai. These are the growth factors required for specific bacteria. In sub pe question hai, PYQs. Hai. Everyone give me a thumbs up. The most important which are asked multiple times is the three type of hemophilus. Hemophilus para-influenzae, hemophilus ducri and hemophilus influenzae. We know the three type of hemophilus. Hemophilus para-influenzae requires factor 5 for its growth. Ducri requires factor 10 for its growth. And influenzae requires, influenzae requires 5 and 10 both. It requires both. So how you will learn it? So what I am saying, the three type of hemophilus. Hemophilus para-influenzae, hemophilus ducri, Hemophilus ducri and hemophilus influenzae. So learn like this. T for 5, it requires factor 5. T for 10, it requires factor 10. And influenzae requires both 5 and 10. How you will learn? So what are the three types of uh, hemophilus? What are the three types of hemophilus? Hemophilus para influenzae. Hemophilus, hemophilus influenzae and hemophilus ducri. ducri. So tell me the name of the factors they require. So P for 5, it requires factor 5. T for 10, it requires factor 10. And influenza requires both 5 and 10. It's a multiple time MCQ. Hai. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? Yashwant, Nirav Kumar, Sakshi, others. You got it? Say yes or no. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So it's a multiple time MCQ. Hai. You have to learn it. Right? You have to learn it. What is factor 5? Factor 5 is NAD. What is factor 10? It is heme. You should know the name of the factors also. So this is the list you have to learn. Nocardia requires paraffin without which it cannot grow. This may be a lot of question. So you have to learn the list of the growth factors, the important growth factors required for which bacteria. So which bacteria? E. coli requires wall. Salmonella requires wall. wall. Typhi requires gonococcus. You should know the name of the amino acids and important factors required for the growth of various bacteria. This is the list. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now there is a confusion in iron. Let me solve this confusion iron is required as a growth for the growth growth of growth of three bacteria the mnemonic is cns so clostridium uh, cornibacterium diphtheri nizeria and shigella in tino ke liye iron is a growth factor iron is required for the growth of these three uh, bacteria but iron is required as a virulence factor not growth factor the answer is listeria the answer is listeria you got my point so read the question very carefully in your exam Iron, epi, iron is required as a growth factor for which bacteria or iron is required as a virulence factor for which bacteria. Now, the both questions are very similar. So, you can do wrong. So, you can do the mistake here. Iron is required as a growth factor for three bacteria. What are the three bacteria? Uh, Cornibacterium diphtheri, Nizeria and Shigella. CNS is the mnemonic. As a virulence factor, it is required. As a virulence factor, it is required for Listeria. For listeria, it is required as a virulence factor. So, cornibacterium diphtheria, miseria and shigella and listeria. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got? Yes, CNS and listeria. So, actually, CNS is the three bacteria for which iron is required as a growth factor. But listeria is the bacteria in which iron is required not for growth but for showing virulence. So, being specific in your question. Right? So, options may be all. So, you don't have to fall in the trap. Right? The next question. The next question. Okay? The next question is on Stilitism, still uh, you know, uh, satellitism. What is satellitism? Satellitism kya hota hai? You may be knowing the satellite phenomenon. Satellitism, that is satellite colonies are seen in which bacteria? Satellitism is due to which bacteria? So you require, you, you uh, grow H influenzae in presence of Steph aureus. So Steph aureus will give satellitism to H influenzae. That is satellitism. Now don't get confused. You may be knowing what is satellitism. Don't get confused on satellitism and stilitic growth. The spelling is same. Stilitic growth on Ghi Agar is shown by Yersinia. So, satellitism is something different. Still, stilitic growth is something different. Now, satellitism may be two question. Hai. Satellitism is seen in which bacteria and it is due to which bacteria. So, these are the confusing points which I have 
uh, gathered together so that uh, you don't get confused when the question is framed on these points. These are already your PYQs. These are the high yielding points. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. The last thing is the numerically de uh, named disease. There are some diseases which are based on numbers. Do you know the name of those diseases? Yes. In Pebi, bohat MCQ aate hain. First disease kya hai? First disease is measles. Second day disease kya hai? It is scarlet fever. Third disease kya hai? It is measles rubella. Three day fever kya hai? Sand, sand fly fever. Fourth disease kya hai? Fourth disease is exanthem due to streptococcus. Fifth disease pe bohat PYQ haaya hai. Fifth disease is slatchy capirance caused by parvovirus. It is known as erythema infectiosum. Right? So you have to learn. Seven year age pe question hai in derma. It is known as KB. Eighth day disease is titanus. Is pe question hai. Hundred days cuff pe pertussis. It is question. Hundred day glaucoma of thel ka question hai. It is neovascular glaucoma. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Not only in pathology, not only in microbiology, not only in pharmacology. These are the mnemonics from multiple subjects. Everyone, everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone, everyone. So you have to learn these number numerically, numerical, numerical name disease. You have to learn the numbers. You have to learn the numbers. The last thing is the important fever. There are many named fevers. Fever has specific names. So first understand there is hemorrhagic fever. Hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome. African hemorrhagic, Brazilian hemorrhagic, Brazilian purpuric. So see the various names. The various types of fevers caused by various types of viruses. Most of them are virus. Some of them are bacterial virus. Query fever. Query fever is caused by uh, Coxilla burnetii. Gold fever. Gold fever is caused by Rickettsia. Rickettsia provozaki. Haver heel fever. It is caused by which? Oraya fever. Glandular fever. So I can provide you the list, all fevers together, all fevers. Now these are the catchy words, you know, jen pe one-liner MCQs aate hain, the rectification, the one-liner. You don't have to understand, you have to learn the list. So my advice to the students, just read the list before going to your exam. You cannot learn everything. The lists are endless. You cannot learn everything. But if you have, if you have, uh, you know, read the list four or five times before going in the exam. So looking at the option, it will click you. It will click you. Yes, that uh, hemorrhagic fevers is caused by Ebola virus and dengue virus. Hemorrhagic fever of renal syndrome is caused by Hunter virus. But African hemorrhagic fever is caused by Marburg and Ebola virus. Brazilian is caused by Sibia virus. So these are the various types of hemorrhagic fever. Query pe PYQ hai. It is caused by Coxilla pernetii. Gold fever, Haverhill fever, Oraya fever, glandular fever. Glandular fever pe question hai. It is caused by EBV. So PYQ abhi tak do teen pe hi hai hai. PYQ query pe hai, hemorrhagic pe hai aur glandular pe hai. In teenon pe previous year question papers. Okay, you will find the questions. But the new questions can be framed on any of them. You should know the list completely. Give me a thumbs up. That is the important fevers. You can see the Jamshedpur fever, Shanghai fever, right? Pontaic fever, right? Malta fever, Andulant fever. These are the names given to various fevers. Learn the organism. Learn the organism with which it is caused. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Now, the next mnemonic is on the stains. You know the two types of stains in microbiology. Gram stain and acid fast stain. Tell me the name of the organisms which are positive for gram stain and negative for gram stain. And tell me the name of the organism which are positive for acid fast and negative for acid fast. Who will tell me the name of the organism? Let me talk about gram stain first. I'm not telling you the principle. I guess you already know the principle. Gram stain. Some organisms are gram positive. Some organisms are gram negative. Right, of course. The one which are violet in the end are gram positive. The one which are red in the end are gram negative. That we know. We can see the violet in the end are gram positive. The red in the end are gram negative. You may be knowing the principle. I'm not interested in that. Right. I'm compiling two classifications. Some uh, bacteria are spherical. These are known as cocci. And some bacteria are rod shaped. These are known as bacilli. Right. This is one classification. Some bacteria are gram positive. Some bacteria are gram negative. Compile the two classifications. The two classification, one based on shape, one based on gram staining. So four classes of bacteria are there. We can divide the bacteria into four classes. Some bacteria are gram positive, but they are cocci. They are gram positive, but they are spheres. Some are gram negative cocci. They are gram negative, but they are spheres. Some of them are gram positive bacilli. They are rod shaped, but they are gram positive. Some are gram negative bacilli. So the four categories of the bacteria is GPC, GNC, GPB, GNB. First, give me a thumbs up. I'm compiling the two classification, gram staining and the shape. The shape is cocci bacilli and the gram staining is gram positive, gram negative. Now tell me the list of the bacteria inside each, each category. That is a mnemonic. 
So gram positive cocci are only two involved. Staphylococcus, streptococcus, double S. Only two bacteria in the world are gram positive and cocci. Give me a thumbs up, double S. Gram negative cocci are two, Neisseria and Morexella. Only two, NM. The list is NM. In ABCD, these, these are in sequence now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. M and N. So they come together, M and N. So these are gram negative, Morexella and Neisseria, right? So SS, NM. Tell me the list of the bacteria which are gram positive bacilli. Gram positive. These are gram positive but rod shaped. These are gram positive but rods. The bacilli. So the mnemonic is A B C D L. A B C D L. What are the five bacteria? It is Actinomycetes. It is Bacillus anthrax. It is Clostridium or Clostridium. D for diphtheria. Cornubacterium diphtheria and Listeria. The five bacteria. These are gram positive as well as bacilli. Now the last category is the longest one. Gram negative bacilli. I don't have any mnemonic for that. So all remaining bacteria, jitne bhi bach gaye, inko chhod ke, all remaining, you may be knowing many bacteria, all remaining one. Okay, except SS, except NM, and except ABCDL. So 2 plus 2 plus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Except these 9, remaining all are gram-negative bacilli. It can be E. coli, it can be Klebsiella, it can be Salmonella, it can be Shigella, it can be Vibrio, it can be Rickettsia, it can be Spirochetes, it can be Chlamydia, it can be anything. The list is endless. So all remaining bacteria are there. Don't learn the mnemonic there. So all remaining are brown negative bacilli. Learn like that. Give me a thumbs up. Come on, give me a thumbs up. So you got the mnemonic. You got the mnemonic based on gram staining. So what are gram positive cocci? GPC kya hai? Gram positive cocci are only two staphylococcus and streptococcus. What are gram negative cocci? Gram negative to cocci are only two N and M. N, M. S, S. What are gram positive bacilli? GPB. Gram positive rods. A, B, C, D, L. Actinomycetes, Bacillus, Clostridium, Diphtheria, Listeria. Give me a thumbs up. Come on. Gram negative rods. Don't learn the list. Gram negative bacilli, all others. All others. It can be Legionella, Campylobacter, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Protea, Salmonella, Shigella, Rickettsia, Chlamydia. It can be anything. Remaining all. Except these, 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 and these. Except all. These are gram negative rods. So that is about the gram staining. So gram staining ka mnemonic ho gaya ab aate hai acid fast staining pe. Acid fast staining. So tell me. Uh, there are two types of organisms. The one which are acid fast and the one acid fast mein positivity and negativity nahi hoti hai. In gram staining, we have gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria which we compile with the shape gram positive cocci, negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli. So, we have combined shape. But in acid fast staining, the other stain, there are two types of stains. Na? The acid fast staining. It is not positivity and negativity. It is acid fast organism <coughs> who are acid fast and non-acid fast organism. Don't say acid fast positive and negative. Like gram positive, gram negative. Gram staining is gram positive, gram negative. The list of the bacteria you may be knowing. Gram positive may be dome divide karo cocci bacilli. Yaha pe bhi dome divide karo cocci bacilli. Now you know the list. Acid fast may we are not uh, dividing on the basis of the shape. So only two lists are there. Right. Some organisms are acid fast organism. The other ones are non-acid fast organism. So I will give you a list here. So remaining all are here. I will not give the other list. Remaining all bacteria are non-acid fast. So learn the list of acid fast only. Learn the list of acid fast. Acid fast ka list kya hai? Tell me a mnemonic. Mnemonic for that. So acid fast ka mnemonic is in front of you. This is the mnemonic. This is the mnemonic in front of you. I will tell you the full form also. First understand the mnemonic. No longer separate booking for RIM. R-I-M. RIM SIM card. No longer separate booking for RIM SIM card. Right. You can make some other mnemonic also. No ka N is no cardia. It is a bacteria. Which is gram, which is not gram, sorry, acid fast organism. It is acid fast. Longer ka L is legionella. It is also a bacteria. S separate ka S is magma bacilli. It is also a bacteria. Right. Booking ka B is bacterial spores. The spores of the bacteria are acid fast. You may be knowing spore forming bacteria. Who will tell me the mnemonic for spore forming? When I have BSC chemistry. You may be knowing the four bacteria which form spores. Right. RIM, R I M. It is rhodococcus, isospora, and mycobacterium. Mycobacterium tuberculosis also, Mycobacterium leprosy also, right? Agar alag se bina is mnemonic ke, if I ask you acid fast organism, most of the students tell me only one answer, ma'am, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is acid fast organism. What about others? You see the list is very big. It is not only one bacteria. Many bacteria are acid fast positive. Apart from Mycobacterium TB. TB to sabko pata hai. Anyways, R-I-M ke baad sim ka jo S hai, it is sperm. Human male sperm. Male mein sperm so hai na? Those are also not the ova of female, but the sperm of the male, human male. It is acid fast. It is not an organism, but it is a structure which is acid fast. And card ka C is cryptococcus. Cryptococcus is a fungus which is acid fast. 
Give me a thumbs up. So some of them are bacteria, some of them are parasites, some of them are fungus. This is the list of some of them are bacteria, some of them parasites, some of them are others. These are acid fast organisms. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So what is the summary? What is the mnemonic for staining? The summary for mnemonic for stains. Stains in microbiology. Basically in microbiology, we have two main stains. The gram stain and the acid fast stain. The two stains we use basically in microbiology. Give me a thumbs up. Based on gram staining, we divide the organism into four categories. Gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli and gram negative bacilli. You know the uh, bacteria under each category. Based on acid fast staining, we divide the organism only in two categories. Acid fast organism and non-acid fast organism. It is not positive and negative. It is like this. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Who will, who will help me in revising this? Who will help me? So, gram positive foci are only two step and strep. Gram negative foci are only two Neisseria and Morexilla. Gram positive bacilli is A, B, C, D, L. Actinomacetes, Actinomacetes, Bacillus, Anthrax or all Bacillus. Clostridium, diphtheria, listeria. Gram negative bacilli is remaining all. Remaining all. Inko chhodke jitne bhi baj gaye. Remaining all. Don't learn the list. Give me a thumbs up at least on this point. Osama, Sakshi, Yashwant. Those who are watching me live. Nirav Kumar. Give me a thumbs up. You got my point. Coming on acid fast organism. In acid fast organism, the mnemonic is no, no longer separate booking. No longer separate booking. For RIM, R-I-M, RIM, SIM card. So this is the mnemonic. You may be knowing the full form. It is Nocardia, Listeria, Smegma. Nocardia, Listeria, Smegma. Bacterial spores. Rhodococcus, Isospora, Mycobacterium, Tuberculosis and Lipri both. S is sperm. One S is spore, one S is sperm. Human sperm. Right. And what, what was C in the last? Cryptococcus. Yes, Cryptococcus. And remaining all. Don't learn the list here. Remaining all. Remaining all. Inko chhod ke jitne bhi baj gaye. Wo yaha aake. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So that's, that is the mnemonic for stains in bacteriology. Not only we should end here. I should tell you one more thing. There is a special type of stain. Okay. You want to do a question? Okay. Let me, let me skip this. Let me skip. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are metachromatic granules present inside the corny bacterium diphtheri, one of the bacteria. It is something purple color granules present in some bacteria. These are known as volutin granules or metachromatic granules. Tell me the name of the bacteria inside which these granules are present. My next mnemonic. Metachromatic granules kitno ki andar hota hai. How many bacteria you know jit ki andar metachromatic granules hota hai. So there are five bacteria. The mnemonic is MSC garden in Agra. MSC garden in Agra. M for mycobacterium. S is spirulum volutin. C is corny bacterium diphtheri. Diphtheri sabko pata hota hai. Jis ki andar ye granules hai. But there are other bacteria also. Garden is Gardenella and Agra is Agrobacterium, Agrobacterium tumerifacens. So these are the five bacteria MSC garden in Agra inside which metachromatic granules are present. So learn this list also, learn this list also. Ye metachromatic granules ke bacteria hain, in which bacteria the metachromatic granules, volutin granules, these are also known as babes Ernst granules, you may be knowing, babes Ernst granules are present, right. So, tell me the name of the stains by which these granules can be stained. Metachromatic granules ko stain kaise karte hain? The mnemonic is PLAN. P-L-A-N. P for Ponder stain. L for Loeffler stain. A for Albert stain. And N for Neisser stain. You may be knowing Albert stain, most of you. Only Albert pata hai tumhe. Baki ke bhi yaad karo, in pe questions hain. So, the summary is that I have told you two more mnemonics. Both mnemonics are based on metachromatic granules. You know... No, metachromatic granules are the purple color granules present in some bacteria. These are also known as volutin granules. These are also known as polar granules. These are also known as babes Ernst granules. babes Ernst granules. So learn the other name of these granules first. Yes, of course. Now I'm giving you two mnemonics here. Tell me the name of the bacteria inside which these granules are present and tell me the name of the stains with which these granules can be stained. Can you tell me the two mnemonics? Can anyone of you, Osama, Yashwan, can you tell me the two mnemonics? The name of the bacteria is MSC Garden in Agra. Five bacteria are there. And the name of the stain, yes, Sakshi, name of the stain, PLAN, P-L-A-N, PLAN. Should I say the full form or you already know the full form? What is PLAN? PLAN, yeah, it is Ponder stain, Loeffler stain, Albert stain, Neisser stain. If you have solved your PYQs, now thoroughly, last five years ki PYQs solved kiye hain. So you will find a PYQ here. 
I don't remember the exam kis mein, it is an FMG or I guess, but it, it is a PYQ. One of the exam, this is already, the stains on the metachromatic genome is already question. Right, plan. MSC Garden Agra. MSC Garden mein corny bacterium diphtheri pe already PYQ hai. Already PYQ hai need PG few years back. That which of the following bacteria shows metachromatic genomes, answer was corny bacterium. The question can come on anything. This year kis pe question aega, we don't. So that is the two mnemonics on metachromatic granules. I have given two mnemonics on the stains, gram stain, acid fast stain. Two mnemonics on the granules, metachromatic granules, right? The last, okay, you want to see the question? So this is the question from FMG a few years back. Metachromatic granules are stained by which stain? So the four options are in front of you, ponder stain, gram stain, negative stain, Lishman stain. So of course the answer is ponder stain. Everyone knows the answer, right? See the next question. Albert stain is used for what? Is it used for Staphylococcus, Corny bacterium, Clostridium or Clostridium, Prosperingus or Titini? So, Albert stain is a stain which is used for staining metachromatic granules and metachromatic granules are present in Corny bacterium diphtheria. So, the correct answer here will be B. So, the questions like this, right? So, the, 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 the mnemonics are endless. Still, I am having 100 more mnemonics with me. I have told you the mnemonics for the bacteria which do not follow Cox postulate. The list of the bacteria which are capsulated. The list of the bacteria which are spore forming. The list of the bacteria which are motile, bipolar and peritrichus flagella. The list of the bacteria which are non-capsulated, non-spore forming and non-motile. The list of the bacteria which are anaerobe. The list of the bacteria which are aerobe. The list of the bacteria which are microaerophilic. The list of the bacteria which are catalase positive, oxidase positive, urease positive. The list of the bacteria which produce pigment. The list of the bacteria which forms biofilms. The list of the bacteria in which metachromatic granules ke bacteria bhi batai, mani stains bhi batai. Gram staining ke char criteria batai, char divisions. Acid fast staining ke batai. So you can see how many and I am missing many. So I have told you the list of the intracellular organisms. I have told you the list of the hackett organisms. I have told you the list of the skin test in various bacteria. So you can count how many mnemonics today's lecture is how much important. Expect many questions from all these mnemonics. You should know the mnemonics of all these. Mani sab ke batai hai and the full form of those. So those who have missed the lecture, they must watch the recording from, from the beginning and I will continue this lecture tomorrow. The mnemonic marathon will continue tomorrow. Now at 10 o'clock, I'm having next lecture on the app, not on the YouTube, on an academy app. So thank you very much for being with me. I really enjoyed teaching you this lecture. Hopefully same from your side also. Let me announce my next lecture. I'm having next lecture right now at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock after one minute, after ending here, I will join on the app, on Unacademy app, learners app. It is a free lecture. It is a free lecture. What I am going to teach you, I am going to teach you ATT, anti-tubercular treatment, anti-tubercular drugs along with latest dots regimen. So I am having a two-hour lecture there. Don't dare to miss it. I will teach you all five drugs, HRZDS. So in a simplified manner with multiple mnemonics, with the beauty, I am going to, in a comparative manner, I am going to teach you anti-tubercular drugs in pharmacology with dots. So I'm having the lecture there on an academy app. Use code Sajdev10 to join the lecture. The lecture is free, but use code Sajdev10 if required, right? So this is the NEET PG calendar. Today you are having a test and tomorrow. So this is a free test. Use code Sajdev10 to participate in this test. I want everyone to participate in the free test. All India mock test NEET PG 2022 is going to happen on 1st May on 9 a.m. So set your reminders. And everyone should participate in this test to see their All India rank prediction, right? Again, use the same code such Dev 10 to participate in this test. It is a free test, right? These are the various plans available with an academy in the plus, in the iconic and in the light subscription. See various plans, duration, price, longer the plan, cheaper it is. If you apply my code such Dev 10 before payment on any of these plans, you will get straight power 10% discount. Thank you very much. Please join me on an academy learners app right now. After ending this lecture, if you want to study pharmacology, if you want to study DOTS regimen, if you want to study anti-tubercular treatment, anti-tubercular drugs. So right now, it is a free class. Use code such they've done to join the class. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm joining there. Ending here. Bye-bye. I want everyone to come on the app.